What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. As always, thank you for tuning in. So you guys remember on the last episode, we talked about the pressure campaign that was used by BLM, the Democrats, Antifa, and most of all, the media in order to get a conviction of Derek Chauvin for the murder of George Floyd. So the pressure campaign by the media, it's not, it wasn't just Derek Chauvin. In the last episode, we talked about Kyle Rittenhouse, the pressure campaign there. And right now, the SCOTUS is under a pressure campaign. I forgot to mention that on the last show. They are mounting a massive pressure campaign against the SCOTUS. Why? Because they know the SCOTUS is going to be ruling against these Donald Trump cases. It is the SCOTUS that is essentially going to determine whether Donald Trump wins the election and democracy survives in this constitutional republic of ours, or does democracy die? And the reason why they're mounting this pressure campaign against the SCOTUS is they want to intimidate the courts. This is what Democrats do, man. I say this all the time. The Democrat Party and the media are one single entity. They are the same thing. They have a symbiotic relationship. They are one and the same. The media is the apparatus of the Democrat Party, and the Democrat Party is the apparatus of the media. The media essentially tells the Democrat Party what to do, and the Democrat Party tells the media what to do. Tells the media, hey, start a pressure campaign here, or hey, start talking about this, or hey, start building this narrative. So that's what they're doing with the courts. So this pressure campaign by the media is very effective, and we've seen in the Derek Chauvin trial just how effective and powerful they are. So not just the SCOTUS, but they're mounting a pressure campaign against the judge in Florida, Judge Cannon, the one that's overseeing um, the documents case of Donald Trump. They don't like that she's thinking about delaying the case till after the election. So what do they do? Mount a pressure campaign. Mount a pressure campaign against these judges until they get the ruling they want. You know what that seems like, don't you? That's what happens in third world banana republics, okay? So you have a pressure campaign on the SCOTUS by the media. You have a pressure campaign on the Florida Judge Cannon. So the problem is the reason why they can keep mounting and constructing these pressure campaigns on these institutions, and they do this strategically to get the results that they want is because the media is never held accountable until now. Elon Musk vows thermonuclear lawsuit against media matters. This is awesome. Elon Musk, man, and I said this on the last episode, this, this guy, I'm really starting to like this guy. If you think about what he's done, I know his connections with China. I get it. You know, Steve Bannon talks about it all the time. I get it. Steve Bannon, man, that guy rails against the Chinese Communist Party. Nobody is a bigger threat to the Chinese Communist Party than Steve Bannon and what he's got going on over there. Um, But Elon Musk, to me, is a freaking hero, man. This is the only billionaire in my lifetime that has actually used his money to better humanity with his space flight, with his Starlink satellites. You know, the end goal of Starlink is to give free internet for the entire world. That is the end goal of Starlink. I don't know. The guy has ambitious plans for a lot of things that never really culminate into anything like the um, autopilot on his Tesla cars, but at least he's trying. And not just Starlink, but Twitter. The man spent $54 billion on a failing social media platform. Why? Because he knows how important free speech is. Who does that? (laughs) Like, who spends billions of and billions of their dollars. I mean, we're talking $54 billion here. So you're talking about a quarter of the man's wealth on a social media platform, on Twitter, because that's how important free speech is to Elon Musk. This guy is a hero in my book. So not only is he buying the free speech platform, he's also bringing accountability to the media. All right, this is what he did. When he bought Twitter, he essentially bought a crime scene. And when he came in there, he released everything and he showed the entire world the corrupt relationship between social media companies and the government. We all know this. It is out there for everybody to see. The federal government was colluding with the media and coercing the media to censor and stifle speech. Not everybody's speech, 
only speech that hurt their narratives. This is what happened with the Hunter Biden laptop. Twitter censored the story. Joe Biden wins the election. We know he won the election because of that tactic, because polls have come out saying that if not for the censorship of that story by Twitter, a small portion of voters wouldn't have voted for Joe Biden. I think it was like eight or nine percent. And when you have an election that is decided by 42,000 votes in a few different states, that is well beyond the margin Donald Trump would have needed to win that election. So you're talking about a relationship between the government and social media and the media in general that can sway elections by the narratives that they push, but also by the censorship on stories that hurt their narrative. So not only did he reveal to the world just how corrupt the federal government and the social media's corruption and their relationship is, but now he's taking accountability to the media platforms. I got an article here from the New York Post, hat tip to John Levin. Elon Musk said he was preparing a legal challenge against Media Matters for America, a liberal watchdog group which has repeatedly targeted him and X in the past. Quote, the split second court opens on Monday. The X Corp will be filing a thermonuclear lawsuit against Media Matters and all of those who colluded in this fraudulent attack on our company. Musk thundered on X on Saturday. Their board, their donors, their network of dark money, all of them. Damn! The billionaire took issue with an article from Media Matters which accused X of running ads for Apple, Bravo, IBM, Oracle, and Xfinity next to quote-unquote pro-Nazi content. Since it was published Thursday, Apple and IBM both announced they were suspending advertising on X. This is essentially... This is essentially taking money from X. This is Media Matters trying to single-handedly destroy X, which, you know, formerly known as Twitter, by narrative pushing, by pressure campaigns. This is what these people do best. And it's about damn time someone is taking them to the cleaners. And so who else better to do it than somebody that has no problem spending $54 billion on a social media platform so people can have free speech? But now he's going to single-handedly take down Media Matters. And it's places like Media Matters that are the head honchos of these pressure campaigns, these narrative building factories. That is Media Matters. And I cannot wait for this. So this is so this is today. So we're going to find out what happens today. I'm sure you're going to be hearing about this all day today. And you should. This is huge. So in a statement, Musk claimed Media Matters had manipulated the platform in order to deceive advertisers. Quote, this week, Media Matters for America posted a story that completely misrepresented the real experience on X in another attempt to undermine freedom of speech and mislead advertisers, Musk said. Media Matters created an alternate account and curated the posts and advertising appearing on the account's timeline to misinform advertisers about the placement of their posts. Media Matters is pure evil, he said in a follow-up message. So what I get out of this, and it's kind of confusing if you're not really, uh, if you're not really familiar with the inside workings of social media. So advertisers to social media companies are everything. This is how they get their revenue. So this is how they can give you a platform for free, but because it's for free, they have to make their money from somewhere, right? They have to pay all the overhead. They got to pay the servers. They got to pay. It is a massive operation that costs a lot of money. And last I checked, Elon Musk was in the tank. It was not profitable. Twitter wasn't profitable when he bought it, and he knew that when he bought it. And so by Media Matters going in there, and strategically opening accounts and essentially spamming spamming the account in order to get a pro-Nazi advertising or some type of pro-Nazi content next to that account. They screenshot it, and then they say, oh, look, look what Elon Musk's platform is promoting. This is what they do. They probably spent all day creating fake accounts, spamming the accounts, spamming the advertisements to get one type of advertising that looks anti-Semitic or looks racist or something like that. They screenshot it, and then they send out the story. This is awful, but this is how powerful the media is, and they have been doing this for a long time. All the social media platforms that the left doesn't own and that the left can't use as a weapon, they try and destroy. You guys have known this for a long time when you got Getter. You got, you got a bunch that they do this to, and it is essentially them 
censoring people. They don't want people to see the other side. This is when people have an opportunity to see the other side, to see both sides of the story, they usually don't go with the left. And this is how places like Media Matters, Washington Post, the New York Times, the Pravda media outlets I'm talking about on the show all the time. This is how they do it. They do it by crushing dissent. And how they crush them is by little schemes just like this. They have to convince the advertisers like IBM and Apple who pay probably millions of dollars to advertise on X. They convince them to drop X and stop advertising on the platform. And that's how they lose money. They're trying to cripple Twitter. They're trying to cripple Elon Musk's social media platform. Why? Because it's ran by somebody that actually stands for free speech. These people hate free speech. They cannot stand the fact that people can say things that they don't agree with. They hate it. Why do they hate it? Because they know in 15 minutes, a conservative that actually knows what they're talking about and actually knows the arguments can destroy the leftist arguments. This is exactly why they don't like dissenting opinions on colleges and universities. You know, um, Dennis Prager said this the best at an ASU um, at an ASU hearing, he actually came in and gave testimony because him and Charlie Kirk went to ASU to do a speech, to do some type of rally talking about, I, I forget what they were talking about, but you had 30 professors that came out and signed a letter. All right. And this letter is essentially telling everybody at the school, don't go watch these people and trying to get the Dean of the school and all the board members to cancel Charlie Kirk and Dennis Prager speech. Well, it didn't work, but it did cause a lot of riots. It did cause a big, um, it did cause a big ruckus. And I got some audio of Dennis Prager saying just that on that board meeting that he went to, to essentially scold the ASU school board and essentially bring to the school board's attention these 30 professors and how these professors were trying to squash speech at their school. Colleges were the number one spot for dissenting opinions, for debate, for sharing ideas, for communication. I mean, but now this is why the colleges are producing a bunch of radical Marxist leftists. Is because dissenting opinions are not allowed there. They don't want free speech. They want one speech. Because if they allow free speech then they know it's going to destroy their narrative that took them years to build. And so I want to go ahead and play that audio for you of Dennis Prager. And man, does he really nail it right here. Here, check this out. So I have a theory. I know why. I know exactly why they condemned ASU for inviting me. They fear any conservative coming for 90 minutes because in 90 minutes, I can undo four years of the indoctrination that these leftists give their students. They are scared of me, of Charlie Kirk, of Ben Shapiro, of Jordan Peterson, of Heather McDonald. We will undo the garbage, the lies, the fraud, the intellectual idiocies that they purvey in 90 minutes. They are, and by the way, they're right. We do undo everything they do in 90 minutes. That's why they're scared to have us. It makes perfect sense. There is no other reason, and I'll prove it to you. I will come here. I live in California. I will come here and debate any one, any three, any ten, all 37. Happily, under any circumstance you want, you can have a left-wing moderator, and I'll come and debate. But they won't debate for the same reason they don't come on my radio show. <laughs> I invite them. I will give them a million listeners you just give me 200, and they won't do it. They don't debate. They smear. These are vicious. They are the hate people. These are the haters. The 37 are the haters. That's why they didn't come today. They're afraid of this hearing. And they're right. You expose these people, you realize what intellectual and moral lightweights they are. Every single one of them. There you go. Elon Musk taking Media Matters to court to sue them for defamation of X and trying to destroy this free speech platform and Elon Musk's $54 billion investment by strategically screenshotting ads and creating bot accounts and fake accounts to get one anti-Semitic advertising and then running to the advertisers and saying, oh, look at what you're, look at what you're supporting. 
And then that costs Elon Musk billions of dollars, probably billions, I don't know, certainly millions. For years, nobody has been holding these media companies accountable until now. And it takes somebody just like Elon Musk to do it. I wish we had a hundred of these billionaires to spend their money on actually helping this country, helping this society, helping mankind in general. We got a bunch of billionaires out there that use their money for the exact opposite. They use their money for this woke garbage all over the country with DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, and the social justice BS. That's what billionaires spend their money on. Elon Musk is a freaking hero. And he is the biggest asset we have as conservatives, as America-loving conservatives that just want to save this country from the radical leftists that are trying to destroy it. Elon Musk is our biggest asset in this battle, in this battle on information, on this battle of religion, on this battle of good versus evil, all of it. These are the battles. I'm always talking about how we are in a culture war, but it's not just a single front war. There is a, this is a multi-front cultural war, and Elon Musk is our biggest asset. He is our biggest weapon because not only is he the richest man in the world, and he has the money to, to go to battle to take these people to task. He also understands what is going on. He sees what time it is, unlike our politicians, unlike the Republican establishment. I don't know when he took this red pill, because I'll be honest, for the longest time, I thought he was a leftist. I really did. But it couldn't have come at a better time. We need Elon Musk. And I hope Media Matters gets absolutely destroyed for all the narratives and all the BS that they've forced onto this country, all the radical Marxist garbage that they've reported, all the stuff that they've created, all the pressure campaigns that they're behind, all the censoring that they've done, everything. They need to be held accountable, and then maybe media will start being more honest. So Musk reignited anti-Semitism concerns on X this week after he appeared to publicly endorse the sentiments of an ex-user who accused Jews in America of promoting hatred against whites. But Musk later pivoted, declaring Friday that decolonization from the river to the sea and similar euphemisms necessarily imply genocide. And users saying them would be banned from X, earning praise from the Anti-Defamation League. I don't like all of this censorship about uh, of the anti-Semitism. I don't. If you're going to be free speech, you need to be for free speech on both sides. I get how anti-Semitism, it really strikes a chord with people. But we do need to try and remember that it is speech. Okay, you know, there's a fine line. This is why you cannot criminalize speech. This is exactly why. Because then who is the arbiters of what is hate speech and what is not? Okay, you're going to you're always going to have people out there accusing somebody of spewing hate speech when it's really just speech you don't agree with. I said this like three weeks ago that Republicans were walking into this trap of this pro Hamas and these pro Palestinian rallies that are happening all over the country and they're trying to censor them. Don't censor them. We are the party of free speech, even if it's speech we don't agree with. So I don't agree with Musk banning these these posts. I really don't. But like, where do you draw the line? And it's obvious that Musk has drawn a line. But is it the right line? That is the problem we have. And so this is what leads you down that slippery slope of, well, if that's hate speech, then this has to be hate speech. And then next thing you know, there you have full blown censorship taking place. Censorship is bad no matter which side it's on, whether it's Republicans doing it or Democrats doing it. But I'm telling you right now, Re- Republicans need to be real careful on this. You got Fox News praising colleges and universities that are essentially banning groups on campus. Okay, you can't do that. So it, it's it's complicated, and we talked about it a few shows ago, but. That's essentially what what was going on with Elon Musk's tweets, but he pivoted off of it and he saved it. So I don't think that was a big deal. Um, the Jewish population has really supported Democrats and all their and all the radical leftism that comes with them for the longest time. And so Elon Musk was essentially pointing out, it's like, well, Jews were OK with all the radical leftism when it was anti-white stuff, but now that it's anti-Jewish stuff, now they have a problem. That's essentially what he was pointing out. That's what people were trying to say it was, but I don't think it was, because clearly he came out and he said anybody that's posting pro-Hamas stuff on Twitter is going to get banned. I don't agree with it, but whatever, dude, it's your your stuff. 
So, all right, so back to this article. So Media Matters, a far-left nonprofit, has long stoked advertiser boycotts against right-wing organizations and causes, often with misleading and selective editing, and are most famous for their repeated campaigns against advertisers on Fox News. In May 2022, Media Matters president Angelo Corazon publicly said social media companies had been right to block the New York Post's reporting into Hunter Biden. You see what I'm saying? These people are behind all of it. This massive pressure campaign to put on these different media outlets and put on these corporations to try and cripple them so that only their speech makes it through. They try to cripple them when those outlets or those organizations say things that they don't agree with. So when left-wing MSNBC host Joy Reid's old anti-LGBT blog posts were exposed in 2018, Corazon said his group would give her a pass. In 2019, Corazon's old blog, Degenerating Japs, Jewelry, and Trannies, were also exposed, forcing him to publicly apologize. Quote, far from free speech advocate he claims to be, Musk is a bully who threatens meritless lawsuits in an attempt to silence reporting that he even confirmed is accurate. Musk admitted that ads at issue ran alongside the pro-Nazi content we identified. If he does sue us, we will win, Curacao told the Post of Musk's legal threat. Yeah, but that's the problem. Like, he's trying to create a platform that's for everybody because it's all done with algorithms, right? Like, the advertisers know what people look at. The the, the algorithms know everything we do. Everything. And so what social media companies like Twitter, like Facebook, what they do is they use algorithms to target certain people. This is why when you're talking about something and it pops up, the, av- the same thing you're talking about pops up on your phone, that is an algorithm. They know what people are looking up. They know what people are interested in at the time. And so they send them advertising for that thing, for whatever it is. But what Media Matters did is they created an account and they probably started following all these pro-Nazi or, pro- or anti-Semitic accounts. And then by doing that, they tricked the algorithm into popping up probably anti-Jew advertising, whatever it was. I don't even know what the advertising is. It's probably not even that bad. Um, but, but then, they, like I said, they take a screenshot of it and they say, oh, look, at what, look what Musk is supporting. Look what Twitter is supporting. You guys don't want to be a part of this, do you? Costing millions of dollars. And this is what they've been doing for years. They purposely and strategically try to destroy right-wing organizations and platforms. And so I think Elon Musk should sue Media Matters, and I think he should sue them for everything they have. I think he should sue them into oblivion. I want Elon Musk to own Media Matters by the time this is done. That's what I want. Because these people that are running the organization, these people that are running that outfit, Media Matters, are awful, awful people who are part of the degradation of our culture and our society. I don't want their speech censored, but I think what they're doing with these campaigns, these pressure campaigns, and trying to destroy dissenting views and opinions, I think they deserve to be taken the task. And that's exactly what Elon Musk is going to do. So look, we are in a battle of our lives. We are, our country is on the brink of collapse. There's no doubt about it. We are watching a massive cultural swing right now between the the Jewish, Israel, Palestine, Hamas thing happening, that whole ordeal happening has caused a massive cultural revolution in this country. So the Jews and the Israelis all across the country are finally starting to realize which side actually has their back, which side actually has their best interest. Um, Because they do tend, like I said, they do tend to support Democrats and everything that comes with the Democrat Party which means the leftism, the progressivism, the anti-white stuff, the CRT stuff. Yes. Um, Now, whether the Jewish people, whether the Jewish population knew they were supporting that or not, the Jewish population does seem to be a little bit more on the progressive side. But they're starting to see exactly what's going on here. They're starting to see which party is the party of Israel, is the party of the Jews, and which side is not. It is clear and obvious to the Jewish population at this point which party is their biggest ally. And it, I'm telling you right now, it is not the Democrat Party. And that is why Media Matters is freaking out. That is exactly why the Democrats are freaking out. That's why Joe Biden and the Biden administration are trying to play both sides of this, uh, this Israel-Hamas war. 
Okay, this is at the same time they want Israel to eradicate Hamas. They're telling Israel not to eradicate Hamas. <laughs> so it's a very tricky situation. But I just seen this article yesterday when I was doing the show and I wanted to bring it out to you guys because this is going to be a big deal. And I hope Elon Musk takes them for everything that they're worth because these people are the dredge of society. They are the masters of destruction in this country. They have become everything that they claim to hate. They are anti-American, they're anti-free speech, they're anti-religion. They are everything that is wrong with this country. And I hope one day Elon Musk owns them. So speaking of Elon Musk, just off the top of my head, there was a a second try of the SpaceX, the the mega rocket that he has. Oh, the Starship. The SpaceX Starship launched not yesterday, I think on Saturday morning. Yeah, I think on Saturday morning it launched. It made it all the way. It made it all the way to space this time, and then they they blew it up. It's wild, and it sucks I didn't watch it. The one freaking time that I'm not out there watching a rocket is one of the biggest rockets to ever be produced on this planet. And I think to, it is the biggest. Uh, It is bigger than the Saturn V. This thing has like 19 rocket engines on the bottom. It's huge. It stands at 400 feet tall. When this thing takes off on the launching pad up in Cape Canaveral, it looks like an atom bomb going off. I mean, this thing is so big. When it takes off, it's like creeping. Like, like, unlike anything I've ever seen. And there's so much power behind it. It's got a thousand foot flame tail coming out of the bottom. And this thing just starts picking up speed and it just hauls ass. And the first time they tried it, they had to blow it up because it started spinning out of control. But this time, this thing made it all the way up into space. It detached the main rocket boosters and they blew it up. But they blew it up when it was kind of when it was in space. So it just looks wild. I'm going to post the footage on my social media account so you can see it. It is the craziest thing you've ever seen. Um. It was Elon Musk that made me think of it, but uh, like I said, it pissed me off because the one time I'm not out there to watch a rocket launch, it ends up being the biggest rocket launch in human history, which sucks, and I miss the explosion and everything. It looks so wild. Seeing something explode in zero gravity or near zero gravity is wild, so this thing, it blew up, and it just looks like, I don't know. It's hard to explain. It just looks like... um, I don't, it almost looks like an explosion in water. It's very weird. There's no fire. There's no flames or nothing. It's just white smoke that just poof, blows out. I don't know how big it is, but man, that would have been a sight to see. But these starships are huge, 400 feet tall. It has like 16 or 19 rocket engines, the Raptor engines. So back in the day when we would launch rockets... We would use different size engines depending on the payload and depending on the weight, uh, whether it was a shuttle, whatever the case is. You guys remember all the different types of rockets. So, But what SpaceX has done is they created one or two types of rocket engines, and all they do is they just attach a bunch of those engines depending on the payload. So you have different rockets. So you have the Falcon 9. I think you have the different Falcons. And then you have the the heavy rockets, the uh, Falcon Heavy. And what they do is they just take all these single engines and they just bunch them up together at the bottom. And so obviously the more engines you have, the more weight it can carry. Well, to lift a 400 foot tall starship, and this thing is huge, it took a lot of, it took a lot of rocket engines. And this thing, I've never seen anything like it. Like I said, when it took off from the launch pad, it looked like an atom bomb went off. And in this big ass spaceship... You could just see just coming out of the clouds, just super slow. Like it was so big. It it almost looked like it was, it didn't even have enough speed to make it up. It was just going to fall over, but it didn't. It it went up. It's incredible what this guy's doing with uh, Starlink, with SpaceX, with Tesla, now with social media and, and the free speech platform on X, and now taking accountability to all these rotten, corrupt media outlets that are nothing but narrative building, pressure campaign, Pravda outlets. That is it. So I don't know, man. We'll see what happens, but this is going to be a big story and he's got the money to do it. So we'll see. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you for tuning in. I'm going to be releasing another show tomorrow around the same time. I want you guys to have a good day. I hope you had a great weekend. God bless you, and God bless America. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.